Oh, well, that's not good. Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. In this video, I want to talk to you about drive shaft issues. Some of the symptoms you might happen to find if you're having an issue with your drive shaft could potentially be shaking, shimmying, or even a little bit of a squeaking noise while you're driving. Of course, there are other parts that could potentially cause these symptoms. You might have an issue with one of your axles, a wheel bearing, but in this video, we're going to be talking about the drive shaft. If you decide you need any parts by the end of this video, order them from 1AAuto.com. They'll be shipped fast and free right to your door. Now let's get into it. Drive shafts are designed to be extremely strong against the twist from the torque coming from your engine and transmission, getting sent all the way down to your wheels to power your vehicle down the road. At the same time as it's doing this, it also has to be able to pivot as your vehicle suspension oscillates up and down. Now let's talk about how they can go bad. Although the drive shaft is strong against twisting, the length, design, and location of it makes it susceptible to be damaged while you're driving down the road. Although this is generally unlikely, people are going to do what they want to do. Keep in mind, due to the size of the drive shaft, they're going to be hollow on the inside. The reason why they did this is to help with fuel economy and weight reduction overall. Think of it like a washing machine. You're on a spin cycle. You've got a load of laundry in there, but it's off balance. As it's spinning around while being off balance, the entire washing machine is just going to start jumping around, making a whole bunch of noise and potentially causing some damage. The drive shaft is going to spin a lot faster than a washing machine, of course, so you can imagine just how much more noise and vibration you're going to have. Some drive shafts can be made out of metal, and that metal might rust or even become rotted like this one right here. When that happens, it can cause an issue where the air that's getting circulated around it from its spinning becomes turbulent, and that's going to cause a shake. Any of these issues can potentially cause shaking or shimmying. Typically, the drive shaft is supposed to be smooth, so while it's rotating, it has no resistance. Commonly, on most vehicles, you're going to find that they have an aluminum drive shaft, in which case you never have to worry about it rusting or rotting. The only thing you typically have to worry about is if you happen to dent it in some way, or if you have an issue with one of those U-joints. Now let's talk about U-joints. Typically, on either end of your drive shaft, you're going to have something that looks like this. On each of your U-joints, you're going to have four caps, and inside of those four caps, you're going to have a whole bunch of little roller bearings. They're supposed to be lubricated during the manufacturing process. So what happens if the lubricant breaks down and doesn't lubricate those little roller bearings so well anymore, or even if moisture made its way in? Now at that point, you could potentially have an issue where the U-joint itself tends to overheat. Typically, it's because while everything's spinning, it's going to create some friction. The friction's going to create heat, and that's going to cause a little bit of swelling. Now, when this happens, it can also cause wear on those little bearings on the inside or on the caps, and then create a little bit of movement. And movement in these is no good. Not to mention, if any of this happens, you might potentially start hearing a little bit of a squeaking noise, especially while you're driving at lower speeds. If left like this for an extended period of time, it could cause excessive movement coming from the drive shaft inside of those cups. When this happens, you might be able to feel it by pressing up and down on the drive shaft or side to side, or even worse, in extreme cases, you can take that drive shaft and twist it a little bit, and you're going to be able to see it start to twist inside of those caps. At that point, you've got a serious issue. If any of this was to happen, it could be a very dangerous situation. Imagine, you're driving down the road. The drive shaft separates at the failed U-joint. If it's still attached to your transmission or transfer case, it's just going to be swinging around all willy-nilly, potentially hitting up against something, causing damage. Or worse, depending on the way that it separates, it might actually come swinging down, digging into the ground while you're still driving. That could be a very dangerous situation. Now it's time to talk about the diagnosis process. Whenever I'm trying to diagnose a shake of any sort, I always like to go on a road test first. While I'm on the road test, I like to see if I can feel the shake coming from the steering wheel, like this or if it feels as though it's coming through the entire passenger compartment. Typically, if it is, you're going to be able to look off to one side or the other, maybe look at a mirror, your rear view mirror, or one of the sides, or even the passenger side headrest. If you see it coming from the passenger side headrest like that, typically means it's coming from the rear of the vehicle. Once you feel as though you find where the shake is coming from, you're going to want to continue on with the diagnosis process. The most common place to have a shake coming from your vehicle would be from the wheels. On each one of your wheels, they should be balanced, and you're going to find several wheel weights making their way around on the outside of the rim and generally along the inside as well. You just want to confirm that's good. You're going to want to make your way underneath the vehicle. 
Go ahead and grab onto that drive shaft along where one of your U-joints is. Give it a little shake up and down and side to side. If you feel any movement inside the cups, typically it's not a good sign. If it does have a grease fitting, you can go ahead and apply a little bit of grease inside there and see if the movement's gone. If it still has movement or if it feels like the movement's excessive in any way, it could potentially cause some shake coming from the drive line and you're gonna wanna make sure that you replace that U-joint. U-joints can go bad other ways as well. If you can grab that drive shaft and give it a little twist and it feels as though the U-joint is twisting inside of each of the cups, that's also not a good sign. Once again, you have to replace the U-joint. Every time you replace a U-joint, it's important to make sure you replace every one of the U-joints in the drive shaft that you're going to be servicing. Some drive shafts will have one U-joint, others will have two, and sometimes you might even find three, depending on the vehicle itself. If you find that you need any of these parts during your diagnosis process, make sure you order them from 1AAuto.com. Okay, let's talk about fixes. If you were to find that you had an issue with the drive shaft itself, to replace a drive shaft, overall it's fairly simple. Like I said before, either get the wheels up off the ground or at least make sure that your wheels are chalked properly so there's no way the vehicle can shift on you. After that, typically you can just remove several bolts, generally along the back where it connects onto the rear differential, and maybe up along the front as well where it connects onto either the transfer case or the transmission. As far as U-joints, if you found that you had one U-joint that was bad or several, typically you don't have to replace the drive shaft at the same time. You can, of course, try to press each one of those U-joints out and then press in some brand new ones. Like I said before, if you find that you have one bat on the drive shaft itself, you need to replace every one of them that's on the drive shaft. It only makes sense, you have it out anyways. If you've damaged the drive shaft, you're going to have to replace the entire assembly itself. Typically, it's going to come with the U-joints already installed, so it's a little easier overall, but it's going to cost you a couple extra bucks. To replace the U-joints themselves, overall, it's not very hard. You will need a specialty tool that makes it so you're able to press the U-joint out of the drive shaft. Now, when you're doing this, you have to be extremely careful not to damage the drive shaft. On this particular one, it's made out of metal. Other times, it might be made out of aluminum. Either way, by pressing out the U-joint, there's the possibility you could break that drive shaft, especially if you didn't take out your locking clips. Something else to think about when you're replacing the U-joints is as you try to remove each one of those caps, Inside of them, they have those little roller bearings that I talked to you about earlier. You want to make sure that they don't fall off or make their way into the cap sitting where they're not supposed to be. You'll try to press everything back together and you'll find that it doesn't sit right and you have a shake still. So with all that said, make sure you fix the issue before other parts get damaged. Now, I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it interesting. If there was something in this video that you think might be helpful, go ahead and share it with somebody. It would mean everything to me. If you like the video or even love the video, go ahead and smash on the like button for me. You mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell. That way there you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks.